Hey, yo, it's David Gregory. And Nikki Llewellyn Gregory, and you're listening to Addicted to Betterment. It's a podcast for high achievers wired for sharpening themselves or those looking for a regular system to develop and level up their life. We've only got one shot at this life. Don't waste any opportunity to live alive and love your life. Let's do this together. Click on the follow button to make sure you get all of our episodes as they drop. Hey, it's Nikki. I'm back with David on Addicted to Betterment. All right. So this next topic is around the power and importance of being present. Everybody listening can work on this, right? All of us. So again, this is where like the community part comes in. Like we want to learn from everyone, but we're going to give it our best shot on telling you how we do this or how we intend to do this. Like how how we would love to walk this walk and things we do to set ourselves up for success in being present in our lives. So David, Tell me why we picked this topic. Oh, wow. Well, it's probably the most effective uh, habit we can incorporate into our life if you really think about it. You know, we always have this saying that we be the person that, that you expect out of other people. So be the leader that you want to follow. Be the spouse that you want your spouse to be. And so if you've ever tried to have a conversation with someone who is very not present, that's very challenging. So the benefit of being present in the moment, the experience that you get to enjoy if you're present in the moment versus the unfulfilling aspect of situations or experiences if you're not present. And I think it's such a gift to both sides. David, you recently said something and you were on a roll about this quote around being heard. Do you remember what I'm talking about? Man, do I ever. So I recently heard a quote on one of my favorite podcasts. It was Craig Grishel, the leadership podcast. And the quote was, the feeling of being heard is so close to the feeling of being loved that they're often indistinguishable. And I tell you what, Nikki, it spoke straight to my soul when I heard that. And I applied it to myself as a parent, a situation I just had with one of my sons who is just one of the most amazing humans I know. And if for all the parents out there, the way you love your kid is you can't, it's hard to even define it or describe it, but a situation where he got to be heard and I got to be heard. And we had this in-depth conversation that was meaningful. It was fulfilling. And our level of love for each other grew substantially to a level that you almost didn't even know was possible simply because of that powerful fact that he got to express himself and be heard fully. And I got to express myself and be fully heard and the power of that and the love that you feel in that. And that that was just both of us being fully present, fully engaged in that conversation. And when I heard that quote, which I listen to that podcast all the time, you'll probably hear me refer to that podcast a lot, but the feeling of being heard is so close to the feeling of being loved that they're often indistinguishable. Mm, so good. Oh, so I want to walk into kind of the prep work that it takes to be present. And I think of two things and I want to hear your thoughts about these. Maybe we just kind of dialogue about them. So a system in my life is always what is the framework, right? What's the box? And then we can fill this in. Or what's the base? And then we can build. That's how I think. And I've got two from a framework perspective. One, is it a hell yes? If not, it's a hell no. Because if I say yes to something that is not a hell yes, I'm not going to be fully present. You know those times where you said yes when you shouldn't have said no? And you're just fighting with yourself that you're doing it. You're fighting driving there. You're fighting about even clicking the button to be on the thing. That is a framework thing that I think is so powerful to consider. And in learning to say no more, you probably heard this before, it gives you more opportunity for the things you say yes to. And then therefore, if they are a hell yes, you made that decision. You're like, hell yes, I'm going to be at that volunteer commitment. Hell yes, I'm going to volunteer or step into this leadership role. Hell yes, I'm going to bring snacks for the kids party. Don't do it unless it's a hell yes, because you're probably not going to be fully present. That's one thing. 
The other is removing the distractions that you know are yours. So for me, my watch that I love so much, my Apple watch for so many reasons, and my phone are my biggest distractions. And so if I need to be fully present, let's say that I'm going to go to lunch with a friend. I can put my watch on silent or turn my phone over, right? Or if I'm in a meeting, right? So thinking about from a framework perspective, saying yes to the things that you can truly be present in, I call it hell yes or hell no, and removing distractions. David, what do you got to chime in on when it comes to laying the foundation to be present? Yeah, that's um, that's really good. You know, to your point of if it's a hell yes or a hell no, if you've chosen to be in that moment, whatever it is. So we've already done that work. You've decided this is a hell yes. So I'm committing to this. The conversation, the meeting, the opportunity, the moment, the what the whatever that is, the game, the experience. Give that its full attention. If you treat each moment, say, for example, I love what you just said about you're on a meeting and you turn your watch off or you take it off or you turn your phone over so that you can be fully invested in that meeting. Here's my challenge to people. Give each moment that same respect. And it's, it's hard to differentiate. I'll just talk as a parent for a moment. If you're having a dinner with your kids, give them that same attention as you would your top prospect or that meeting or that boss. Or it's interesting because here's what I hear a lot is someone will say, man, I had a conversation with this person. It was so engaging. It was so incredible. And if you were fully engaged in that, it allows that person to be fully engaging back with you. If you're doing that with your kids, Maybe your kids want to be fully engaged. You know what? I have teenagers. Sometimes they're not. <laughs> Sometimes I can be as fully engaged as possible. And it feels like I'm competing with the apps on their phone or whatever that might be. And I'm sure all of you can relate. But give that each moment its full justice, its full due to get out of it what you're hoping to get out of it. I want to just add one little thing here because I believe so strongly in what you're saying. Your priorities should be the things that you work on this presence in, right? For example, if David and I are going on a date night to reconnect and it's like, it's a date night. It is there to help us reconnect. That is a great example of where I'm going to apply these things as best I can. I'm not perfect at this at all. However, if David and I are like, hey, let's go run some errands and then stop and grab a snack or dinner or whatever. And we're trying to get caught up on stuff. It's kind of like we're talking, catching up on our phones, whatever. Like the intention of that time was to run errands and get caught up. It's like, because if we lived in this life where every moment of our life was this intention and whatever, it's like, I, I, really, I don't think that you couldn't do that. So that the key is, you know, you're outside doing yard work and you're like, today is yard work day. My watch is on. I take breaks to check my phone. Like I might have a phone call. I might throw in my AirPods, shout out to Apple. And I will do that at the same time, like multitasking. And that maybe that's it where it's like no multitasking when the priority is in play, the key priority. Man, you nailed that. And that really kind of segues great into it's easy to be present in the things that truly give you joy. And so if you think of your actions show the things that you are really in tune with. So you're in, in a relationship and your significant other is just trying to get your attention and you're struggling to be present in the moment with them. That's a clear sign of, of other things. So that's a chance to kind of reevaluate. I do that regularly. Just try to, am I showing up as the person that I'm hoping will be sitting across the table from me, even with you when I'm with you, Nikki, like, and we're at dinner together and it's been a busy day. You've been busy. We've hardly connected all day because I'm deep in work and I know your calendar is busier than anyone I know, but I get 30 minutes of dinner and we're sitting there. I try to, am I showing up present? And I know I fail at that often, but just try to give that its full presence so that I get as much out of it as, as I'm hoping to get out of it. Yeah, it's so good. Let's talk about now in the act of being there, how can we show up? We've eliminated the distractions, we're present, all of these things, but what is it that we can do to really, either from a mindset perspective or an action perspective, make it the most it could be? And this right here applies to anybody that sells or 
is wanting to connect with teenagers, right? Like selling teenagers, either one. Let's just use those as an example. The power of the questions you ask, game changer. The questions you ask are what helps you get to the outcome that is best for all, right? And so tweaking the questions you ask, if you are running a sales meeting and you have not, I'm going to say obsessively thought about the questions that you use in your sales meeting, write that down. Same thing in how that applies to date night, teenager conversations. Have you really thought about the questions that you're going to ask to help you get to the outcome that you want to experience in that time together? It's interesting because the power of giving the same intention to the questions you would ask in your most important business meeting to the time you would spend with your kids or the time you would spend at dinner with your date, man. And the power is, so the title of this is the power of being present. And so we both love to maximize our life and we love to, to get the very most out of every minute of life. So given the full intention and preparation to being asking the right questions or understanding what it is you want to share, you know, being present fully in that moment and prepared, it's really being intentional is exactly what you're describing, being intentional about what I'm asking. And again, and I know it's challenging to sometimes you just want to sit and enjoy space together and enjoy conversation without an agenda, but to really be intentional about the questions that you ask to the person you're trying to be present with or the situation that you're trying to be present with. Give us some examples, Nikki, of say, for example, you're with a friend or maybe you're a date night with me or you're with uh just someone you're catching up with for a long time, but you want that to be a meaningful experience. Help me understand some questions that would maximize that experience so that you and them can be fully present. Okay. So let's give these different scenarios for a minute. Business meeting. Help me understand the legacy you're trying to leave in this role you're in right now. Help me understand the thing that it makes you want to rip your hair out. And if that could get solved, you'd sleep better. You'd live more peacefully. Those are examples of business questions. A teenager. Help me understand the thing that if you got to spend your time doing that thing, it would be your best day. Friend, what are you most proud of right now? Let's celebrate it. So. Everything you just described is allowing that person to feel heard. That's so cool because the examples that you gave is giving that person a chance to feel heard. So if you ask questions that are opening the door versus, hey, how's your day? We all get asked that every day. Hey, how's your day? And the typical answer that we're all going to give is, oh, it's good. It's great. It's the experience of when you stop in the grocery store and I, I'm so guilty of this. I've experienced this so many times. So I, I'm in the line next to some lady that seems friendly and she's older and I just want to have a great conversation and I'm just being friendly and I want to show some, some love and I'm lean over and I say, Hey, how are you today? How's your day? And man, that turns into an opportunity for them to be heard. And next thing you know, you're hearing about the you know, nursing home experience or the challenges of getting old, which sometimes you're like, I don't want to hear anymore. But you know what? At the end of the day, you walk out to to your car and here's what's interesting. While you sat there and you're like, oh my gosh, they really didn't need to share all of that. I was just asking, how was your day? But for that moment, that person felt heard. Yeah. And you can literally see the smile on their face. They feel better because for that moment, someone just got to just to hear them and they got to share the challenges or the experiences of their day of their moment and that and they felt loved in that moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think about that in my podcast journey. You know, this is year five that I've been podcasting, never planned to be here. This is totally a divine situation that came in my way and it's taken over my life and I love it. And since the first six months of podcasting, the nut I cracked, if you will, is design every episode for the person on the other end of the mic and play to what it is that they love or they're fired up about as best you can. And I help everybody do just that. Like when it's about them and you're tapping into what matters to them and the questions like I asked a little bit ago, 
that's what we do with every episode to bring this to a close. You know, the mindset around the power of being present is intention to be meaningful. Intentional impact to make a meaningful experience. That's it. And if you work backwards from that, we shared with you, you know, some framework things. It's like, hell yes, hell no. Remove the distractions. Being fully present in your wanting to help people feel heard. The questions we ask, all of those things. But the end game is the mindset, the why that you bring, which is to make a meaningful experience together. Man, that's good, Nikki. You know, I'm, if you're listening to this show, we are assuming you're a high achiever or trying to become a high achiever. You're trying to level up in an area of life. And here's my challenge. I, I've been on business meetings with people who are underperforming so big and you watch their demeanor and how they show up in meetings that are important and they're disengaged. And you think, man, if anyone in the world would want to be fully locked in to the content of what's what we're talking about today, it would be you. And you know, I shouldn't be judging people like that. But if you're struggling in an area of life, ask yourself, am I fully showing up present in the opportunities in that area? If I'm struggling with my spouse, my spouse and I are, are disconnected. We're struggling. Are we being present when we're having those conversations? Are my kids disconnected? Am I struggling to communicate? Be intentional about the questions you're asking them. Prepare. Think about it. Be intentional in that moment. You're a high-performing salesperson. You're a high-performing leader. You care about your people. If you're a leader of people, the power of pausing and asking meaningful questions so that the people you lead feel heard, they, they will run through a brick wall for you. It's the power of being present. I can't think of a single area of life. It's like going to the gym with something that drives me crazy. And if you go to the gym, you feel me. I'm, I, I have an app that I follow and it's timed and I have a specific workout that I'm going to do for that day. And I finished one set and I get to the, go to the machine that I'm going to next and I'm fired up and I'm energized and I'm loving my workout and someone's sitting there on their phone. And they're just sitting there and they're sitting there like, come on, come on. And five minutes later, they're still sitting there. And of course, I feel lost when I have to deviate my workout. Suddenly, I don't know where I'm going next. I think I just want to go lay down on a mat somewhere. And I'm thinking, man, you're here at the gym. Be present in this workout. Give it its full attention. And here's the thing. Obviously, it wasn't a hell yes for them to be there. There you go. Absolutely. That's a good point. So, Nikki, I love this conversation. I'm reminded once again of the power of being present, fully present. With that said, I know we both believe strongly that we only get better when we take action on what we learn. So here we go. Let's recap the A to B action steps. First of all, is it a hell yes? If not, it's a hell no. Remove the distractions. Eliminate the things that you know that are going to keep you from being fully present. Then take a look. What are your priorities? Do you need to reevaluate what your priorities are? Is scrolling social media or mindlessly watching TV more important than that meaningful conversation with your child, your significant other, that best friend? Number four, be intentional about the questions you ask. Make space for the person you're with to feel heard. Be prepared. Spend time preparing the questions you're asking. Lastly, be intentional to create a meaningful experience. Stop just checking the box. So with that, you know, so many things, and we truly hope that this episode today was a meaningful deposit into your life to advance what you're doing to be more present. We hope you have a great date night. We hope you have an amazing car ride conversation with your child. We hope you close that deal. We hope you're more connected on your team. That's what it's all about. Addicted to betterment. See you next time. So you just listened to this episode. Now, join us in being addicted to betterment. Subscribe to the show, share with your friends, tag us, and please take a moment, leave a review. Yeah, we do want your stars, but we also, we really want the feedback.